Hello, my name is Brahma. Welcome to Hyperion 11.2 installation and configuration session. Today I am going to demonstrate in real time how we are going to install Hyperion 11.2. Before we get onto the system, let me walk you through the steps that what we are going to check for. So the installation sequence would be, first we got to procure an instance which must have at least 4 cores and 16 GB RAM. Well, I would prefer 32 GB if I uh, plan to install the full suite of the Oracle Hyperion EPM products. And the supporting operating system at this moment is Windows only under 2012 and 2016 and 2019, the supported versions. Today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to install on 2019 operating system. The next step would be we got to ensure the page file size is at optimum level under virtual memory and then the third step is going to be we got to set the right roles under local security policy under user rights management and the next step would be we need to add some other some additional application roles to enable IIS because IIS is going to be the web server um, for Hyperion financial management so if you plan to install HFM we need to add additional application roles to enable IIS. Next, if you plan to install the same server to test out, to test SmartView, then I would recommend you have to have the Microsoft Excel also to be there, to be in there. And um, of course, finally, we have to have a database instance up and running. And um, for today's demo, I'm going to select Oracle 12.2 as my database instance. This particular screen talks about the configuration sequence. Of course, once we have successful installation, then these are the things that we are going to proceed with. So I'm going to demonstrate both um, installation and configuration, of course. But at this moment, I just want to walk you through the configuration sequence that we are going to follow. So the first step would be after install, never proceed with um, configuration. Just to stop it right there after installation. Just click finish, come out of the installation steps. Then please go ahead and open the repository creation utility um, and then create a repository. For this, you have to have the system administrator role or DBA role. This is for Fusion middleware anyway. So after successful repository creation, you have to open the RCU schema properties and then you have to go ahead and replace the database connection information and also the repository prefix information and as well as the password. So all this information you will fill it up and you may be wondering once I have this information right there so anyone could see it. You are right you know when you enter this information it's just you know it's a plain text but um, after the configuration if you come back and look at the file all the information is going to be encrypted without having any issue. The fourth step is going to be the creating the regular DB users, schema users, if it is an Oracle, SQL Server, you have to have the databases to host all your repository information for foundation services, reporting and analysis, EAS and the planning and finally you got to run the EPM configuration and you will continue with the product configuration and finally um, the Oracle HTTP server won't be installed as a service so we have to run the Oracle HTTP server manually. That's it. With that, you know, we are done with the installation and we will verify the installation if it is successful. Let's check it out. What is the configuration of the instance that we are going to use for today's demo installation? As you see, this is Windows Server 2019 operating system. And also if you see, I have got four CPUs and um, with uh, 32 GB RAM or 62 bit operating system. The next step would be verifying the page file size. So let me go ahead and click on advanced system settings and then click the settings under performance, click advanced. Now under virtual memory, click on change and ensure C drive or D drive or E drive, whatever the drive that you are going to install your software in that has to have either system managed size or a custom size, but it should not have no paging file, but Please ensure if you are installing in C drive and ensure either it has the paging file size is being managed by system or you could go ahead and click on custom size and you could set it up according to your requirement. By default, 
on a bare bone system it is with the no paging file so that is very dangerous so please ensure that it has to have any setting other than no paging i'm going to go with system manager size that is more intelligent way of managing the page files under virtual man so the next step would be setting the right roles under local security policy under administrative tools i'm going to open local security policy and under that user rights assignment let's open user rights assignment and then let's start with act as part of the operating system policy let me double click this one and then i'm going to click on add user or group and then the service account that what we are going to use to install the hyperion 11.2 we have to use the same username to be assigned under this policy so here that is hype admin in my case i'm going to click on check for names if this particular user exists in the system yes this is my machine name slash the service account or the account that i'm going to use to install the hyperion software and click ok and then apply ok and uh, similarly i'm going to go with allow log on locally and add user or group do the same then i will go with bypass bypass traverse checking bypass traverse checking and i will add user right here after that i'm going to go with log on as a bad job and finally with log on as a service so that's it we are done with the local security policy the next step would be adding the roles and features if you have a requirement to install hyperion financial management because hyperion financial management would require IIS as an application server. So in this case, we need to ensure we have the appropriate roles are added for HFM. From server manager under the dashboard, under configure this local server, you would see add roles and features. So let me go ahead and click on add roles and features so that is going to open another screen here you can click on next and then click next as well and then it is asking that this is the machine name that you are going to install i would say yes and then i'm going to click next. and here it will show all the list of the servers that are available to be installed on this machine so be it a dhcp server dns server all kinds of roles right the one that we are interested in here is IIS web server. So let me go ahead and open that. Here in this case, I have already configured that. That's why you are seeing 13 of 43 components are already, or 13 of 43 features are already installed under this role. Here I have enabled already the web server and its related features. But in your case, you haven't done so. Um, please select IIS and then click next and um, that will be all like you know self-explanatory and that will take you through to install the I The next prerequisite before installing EPM 11.2 is verifying if I have an Excel because I am planning to install the smart U on the same server and also ensuring that I have the database installed up and running. Of course, I have Excel already installed. I'm going to verify if my database server is up and running. So let me go ahead and here I'm going to log in with Sys as SysDBA, verify if I could make a successful connection. So as you see, this is Oracle 12.2 on Windows 64-bit operating system and with my global database name as ORCL. So we are good to go with the next step that is installation of Hyperion. Yes. Now we are ready to proceed with software installation EPM 11.2. Please ensure 
all the downloaded software has been unzipped and then from the unzipped software select install tool.cmd and right click and run as an administrator that will kick start the epm installation and this is going to take at least one hour or so so i'm going to select the language english by default or click ok and please ensure you got all these check marks here and then click on next and um, i have it where you want to install the middleware and i'm going to leave it default and click on next and of course this is going to be a new installation please go ahead and either check or uncheck for the products that you want to be either install or either continue to install or probably you want to remove some of these products and here under s base especially i'm going to make sure that i have got s base in there i don't want an s base studio server i'm going to uncheck that i will ensure i have s base server and provider server and s base administration services are there of course i am going to have the calculation manager under the foundation components um, by default oracle http server is unchecked i am going to enable that and ensure that i have my oracle http server to be as my single managed web server and financial reporting i'm going to leave it like that close management so i want all all remaining products uh, be it tax management financial management everything i'm going to leave profitability and cost management also in there i want a few samples in there and then um, i think with that we are good to go click next and then um, click next as well and um, we can leave the system like this for an hour or so because it will take at least one hour to finish the install now we have epim installer window shows successful installation of all the products that we have selected now here we are not going to continue with the configure like what we used to do in earlier versions like 11.1.2.4 or prior versions we're going to click on finish right here why because we need to create the repository for hyperion infrastructure services in this release so let me go ahead and open the repository creation utility so let me open my c drive where i have installed the software that's going to be in oracle middleware and oracle common and then here i'm gonna go to the bin and here i will see repository creation utility uh, in short rcu let me right click on this one and then click run as administrator all right now it has popped up a screen called repository creation utility let's start with um, by clicking next and then um, all let's leave it everything default um yeah please ensure you have to have the oracle dba privileges uh, because you were supposed to pass the username and password right here and if you don't have it you may have to arrange this with your oracle dba team click next and uh, mine is oracle database and the host name let me go ahead and provide the host name right here and the default port that i have installed the software and the database service name that is orcl and the username i'm going to log in with uh, sys and the um, sys as an ssdba and let me go ahead and click next it will uh, pop up another screen checking all the prerequisites so if, if everything is good to go then you're gonna get this green check marks click ok and um, the create a new prefix so whatever the repository it is going to create it will have a prefix 
you can choose whatever you want i'm going to leave default dev and please make sure that you got all these components are selected under as common schemas right by default it has selected only web logic services but please ensure you have selected everything but uncheck oracle data integrator or master and work repository under that and once this is done go ahead and click next and you will have a quick check mark click ok and then go ahead and create um, a password a common password for all these um, schemas that it is going to generate automatically and so so i have selected the schema password i have create, i have given a schema password and click next so here it is going to say that hey i'm going to create all the schemas on this default table space and go ahead and click next and it says you know, if there is no table space i'm going to create it for you go ahead and do that click ok and then finally go ahead and click on create all right so we could see a success message on all these components now we could go ahead and click on close the next step would be updating the rcu schema dot properties let's go ahead and find out where that file is let me go to the c drive oracle middleware epm system 11 r1 common config 11.1.2.0 here we will find rcu schema dot properties let me go ahead and open this with notepad Go ahead and um, populate all the values. First, let's start with the database URL that is jdbc.oracle and the machine name. And here, the machine name is Hyperion EPM and the port number 1521 and the SID is ORCL. Okay, and the schema prefix is dev and the password. So I'm going to blur this um, password that I'm going to enter here. I don't want to show the password to all of you. So we see schema dot properties with all the values. And as I said, you know, for timing, it's all plain text. But when we run the configuration utility, then it is going to go ahead and um, encrypt all the information. So let me go ahead and start the config tool now because now we are ready to configure the EPM product suite that we have installed. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave all these things as default and then go ahead and click next. And um, I would have to give my server name that is Hyperion EPM is my machine name and port number 1521 SID service name is global database ORCL and um, here is my Hyperion shared services registry database name emails that you need to have get it ready from your database administrator or if you have a DBA role, you could go ahead and create the schemas. So I have hype found as my user username. And the password, click next. It's going to display all the products. First, I will start with uncheck all and then expand Hyperion Foundation. I will start with configure database until deploy application server. I'm going to do configure web server at the end of them as a last step in the configuration. So go ahead and click next. And um, I'm going to leave everything else default. 
I don't have a mail server at this moment in SMTP server. LCM export import location. I'm going to leave it default and then go ahead and click next to the application server, the web logic domain information. I'm going to leave the administrator, administrator user EPM underscore admin and we'll give a password and we have to remember this password, right? Because if you want to access WebLogic console at a later point of time, you have to have this information handy. I'm going to go ahead and click next. And by default, you have deployed the Java web applications to a single manager server. I don't want that thing to happen. I want everything to be deployed to Oracle HTTP server. So uh, click next. And we will go ahead and give the password that which we have to remember again. I would recommend not to go with the admin password password. That's very dangerous. And click next. Now it is successful. All Hyperion Foundation components are successful. Go ahead and click on task panel. Now we'll continue with um, other products. So in the order, maybe I'm going to go ahead and start with Calculation Manager. And I have a separate schema user for Calculation Manager. I'm going to go ahead and give that username. As I said, this username and password details of database users we should get from Oracle DBA. I will leave it default and they ensure that you know I have my application server host is IP in EPM and click next and we'll go ahead and click next. Now calculation manager configuration has been done successfully. Let me go ahead and click on task panel to continue with the remaining configuration. And check all. Maybe this time, what I'm going to do, I will select all the products that I want in one shot, probably until financial management and financial reporting. And then we'll go ahead and click on next. So here, oh, where did I see financial close management? Let me go ahead and go back. Well, I don't want financial close management, but rather I want financial management to be configured. And we'll click next. <clears throat> and we'll ensure you have the server details are appropriately set up. So instead of the fully qualified name, I have given the short name of the server. And I have a, a different usernames, a different DB users for each and every product. I'm going to put all those details right now. Now I have populated all the required usernames, uh, required database usernames for all the products. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on next so that all the products will be configured in one shot. So I'm going to leave all the default ports. So I'm going to leave all the default ports as it is. I'm not going to make any changes right here. Click next. The space cluster name. I'm going to leave all the space uh, details also just like that. The only thing is binding host name. I'm going to give the short name of the host name. And then leave all the ports, everything just like that. Click next. And RMA ports also the same range. I'm not going to make any changes in there. And same thing with financial management. I will leave all the ports just like that.
So this is a HFM specific screen. Here we are supposed to go ahead and create a cluster. Click on add and you give any name that you want. I'm going to give HFM cluster and click OK. And, um, and I'm going to make this available server to be added under the cluster by selecting the server on the right hand side screen and click add to push to the left hand side so that this server will be part of the cluster and then click on next. Everything is good to go and finally I'm going to click on next so that it will continue with the configuration. Right, it took quite a time and um, let me go ahead and quickly scroll down to see if everything is completed. Yes, it is. I'm going to click on task panel. And I will go ahead and uncheck all. And I will go ahead and continue with uh, configuring the web server. This is the last piece with the logical addresses as well. Click on next. Okay, web server type supported or IIS and all, but I'm going to go ahead and select HTTP server that will act as a name common front end for all all our managed servers on the web server port 19,000. I'm going to leave it like that. Click on next. Okay, that is Hyperion EPM and uh, is my server name and I will go ahead and click on next and click next. Okay. Now configure web server has been successful. Click on finish because this is the last step in the total configuration. Quickly look at the services and these are all the Oracle Hyperion services are created as part of the installation. We have a successful installation. So the very first time before we start all the services, please ensure that you run the weblogic server. So this is one time. So every time you don't have to do this, but very first time after configuration, what we got to do is we have to run the web logic from this path, middleware, user projects, domains, EPM system and bin. And you go to the start weblogic.cmd, right click and run as an administrator. Now we have web logic started successfully and all the services are running successfully. Now it's testing time. Let's go ahead and open the workspace and see how it looks like. That is machine name colon 19,000 slash workspace. Boom, nothing worked, right? It is very, very much expected. Why? Because the Oracle HTTP server has not been started automatically like in earlier versions 11.1.2.4. So let's do some quick testing. Um, let's see if we can open the workspace from the directly on the manager server port that is 28080 slash workspace and it is working fine. Meaning all our services are up and running but the only thing is Oracle HTTP server which acts as in a common front end for all the services for all the web apps is not up and running. That's why we are getting the that not found error. So um, what we got to do? What we have to do here now is we need to run the HTTP server and uh, so let's go ahead and find the HTTP server from this path. Oracle middleware user projects EPM system one HTTP config OHS and bin. So let's go ahead and run this from the command prompt. So I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to copy this path and then, um, all right, I open the command prompt and I'm going to go to the directory of my Oracle HTTP server and then I'm going to issue the command start component OHS underscore component. Now it is going to ask the password to connect to the node manager to run the Oracle HTTP server. Please go ahead and give that password. That is the password that um, you might have set up 
while we are setting the weblogic um, server that is um, with the username called epm underscore admin the same password you have to issue here okay so please notice that we have seen some messages here connecting to node manager successfully connected to node manager on starting server which is server and successfully started and finally disconnected meaning now we have OHS is OHS is up and running so let's go ahead and uh, do some testing browser and then I will I'm going to issue the workspace command workspace URL on port number 19,000 and now it has connected successfully without any issues so let's go ahead and quickly try the um, admin username and password so it connected without having any issues let's find out um, if we are seeing all the products that we have installed and configured successfully let's go to the navigate and administer you see consolidation administration this is hfm planning administration of course it's hyperion planning data management this is um, uh, fdm e that is financial data quality management enterprise edition and then calculation manager of course and the shared services console so why don't i just go ahead and try to open one of these products and see how it looks like consolidation administration okay it opened without having any issues let me close this guy and let me go ahead and try to open planning administration planning administration also works fine and then let me go ahead and try the data management that is fdm e so that works fine too and finally we're going to try the calculation manager where we're going to write the business rules on planning and sbs data sources so it all looks fine to me and there is no issue and finally we're going to see the shared services console which is in a centralized user security management and um, all looks good to me how you want to stop the uh, how you want to stop the oracle http server is just issue a command called stop component ohs underscore component that is going to similarly ask for the password to connect to the node manager and issue the node manager password and then you are good to go okay so go ahead and provide the node manager password okay now it's supposed to kill the ohs component i think that's what the message that right now we are seeing so with this actually so by this command the ohs component is going to be killed after this you go ahead and shut down all the services before you want to exit out of the system right so with that actually we wind up this session thank you for your time and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. Thank you. Have a good day.